Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and look at that! No green screen in today's video. I've been shooting a lot of videos on the green screen lately because the Maker Shed has been a lot cold lately. Right now, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of cold, and cold here in the Maker Shed where I'm at means sweater weather. So really, I don't have a lot to complain about, but if you happen to be in one of the areas who are currently experiencing one of the worst winter storms that we have had in a very long time, take care of yourself. Wear lots of layers, hunker down, and good luck. I hope to see you on the other end of this thing. But this cold weather is a perfect introduction to the subject of this video, 3D printing with a cold build plate. So if you've been watching my videos lately, you know that I have been experimenting with the idea of taking 3D printing camping with me into the wilderness. A little bit like the idea that Morley Kurt did, but less eating frogs and slightly better planned. And as part of that, I wanted to know if there was a way to 3D print using a lot less power because I'm going to be 3D printing on a battery pack. So what is it that uses the most power in the 3D printing process? Well, there's obviously the electronics, right? But the electronics don't use a whole lot of power. They just kind of sip on the power. There's the heated nozzle that's heating up and pushing out the plastic. And while that is using up a little bit of power, it's not the biggest power consumer here. There's the movement system. Running those stepper motors isn't free, but again, the, it's not the biggest user of power. No, the biggest use of power in a 3D printer is actually the build plate. Heating up this large surface, even to the minimum of 60 degrees for PLA, requires a lot of power and a constant application of power. There's a reason why most 3D printers heat up the build plate first, because that's going to take the most amount of time to get it up to its 60 degrees, and then heat up the nozzle up to its 200 degrees, and that nozzle finishes in like less than a minute these days. So if there was a way that we could 3D print without heating up the build plate, that would save on a ton of power. And fortunately, my friends at Bamboo Labs sent me their brand new cool plate. See, in the past, I've made mention that the purpose of a build plate is to hold onto the print while it's printing, but release it when it cools off. And thus far, the best way that we've found to do this is to have a build plate that has kind of a change in state between when it's printing and when it's not. And so far, a heated build plate has provided that state change. Whether it's made with PEI or whether you've taken your build plate and covered it in hairspray, either way, it heats up and it gets a little bit more tacky, holds onto the print really well, and then it cools down and it releases the print. But these cool plates, they don't do it that way. They're just always kind of tacky. And are they going to release the print when it's done? Well, it turns out, yeah. Now, full disclosure, this is not the first time that I've used a cool plate. My buddy at Sliceworks sent me a cool plate to try out for the Bamboo Labs 3D printer. This is a third party cool plate and I tried it out. And at the time I was printing Cthulhu and Friends minis and those are printed in ABS. And that did not want to come off of this build plate. In fact, if you look at this build plate, you can kind of tell that it's been damaged by the prints that were on it. Now, at the time, I just thought, well, that didn't work and I put it away. But it turns out that the solution to this problem was actually real simple. All you have to do is put a label on the build plate that says, use it for PLA or PET G only. Don't try printing ABS on this. So I think I can go back to using the third party build plate from Sliceworks as well. So that's another option that you can check out if you want for this. But with PLA or PETG, these cool plates work extremely well. And if you are finding that you're having a hard time removing the print from the bed, what you can actually do is heat up your build plate after the print is done. And by heating it up, this should remove from there. But I haven't really, in my experiments, ever needed to do that. I'm able to pull the prints off of here as soon as the print is done. So it does actually a fairly good job of holding onto the print while it's printing, but then with a little bit of a flex, releasing the print when it's done. 
But how much less power does it actually use? Is it really a significant amount? Well, I decided to do a test. Now, the last time that I was checking 3D printers for power consumption, what I would do was I plugged them into my battery pack, ran a 3D print, and then checked the levels afterwards. But that felt to me a little bit, you know, not quite scientific. And so for this experiment, I actually got a smart plug, a smart plug that I am able to graph the amount of power used over time so that we can compare it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3D printer. I'm going to print with a normal PEI sheet where you got to heat up the build plate. And then I'm going to do just one print in the day. And then at the end of the day or the next day, I'll do a print with the cool plate. For these tests, I'm going to be printing the same model both times. It's going to be the Autobot Mystery Machine Transformable Single Print No Support Material by Talmadge Madison. If you haven't checked out this print, it's really cool. It prints all in one single print on your build plate. And then when you're done, you pop it off and the joints are already all enclosed in there and your transformer will just transform right there. It's a super cool print and I really dig it. Now I printed this model in some Ujoy Bio silver PLA from my friends at Ujoy Bio 3D. Now their filament was actually interesting to me because they have certain filament that they say is fully biodegradable. I don't think this metallic silver PLA is one of them, but I did get a spool of their brown biodegradable PLA. I printed out a Printablock Skyforce air wing model, and I'm going to take this and put this in an active composting environment, and we're going to see if it biodegrades over time. But that's going to take a couple of months of just waiting and letting the worms and things do their job to it. So if you want to find out the result of that experiment, make sure that you're subscribed so that you won't miss when that happens. So how did the hot plate do compared to the cold plate? Let's go check the graphs. All right, so I've got the Smart Plug app running on my phone right now, and we can see that yeah, while it's idling, it's using very little power, 0 0.007 kilowatt hours. But once the print starts, it peaks at about 0.12 kilowatt hours during the printing time. At the very beginning of it, you know, it, it ramps up, but it that doesn't quite, because it's cutting it into hour-long slots, we don't see the spike at the beginning as it's heating up the build plate. We just see this gradual increase. But yeah, it does have kind of a peak at the middle, and then it decreases, finishes the print, and cools off. So let's say that at peak, it was at about 0.12. Uh, an average for that day is 0.72. Now, that same print the next day, but with the cool build plate, took the average down to less than half a kilowatt hour. The previous one was at, what, 0.72. Now it's at 0.47. And we can see that it peaks at only about 0 0.07 kilowatt hours. This is the same print. It took the same amount of time. In fact, both of these prints I had to restart at different times and yet not using the heated build plate, using the cool plate, turned out a significant decrease in the amount of power used. That's a lot more than I expected. I'm really impressed. So this is great news for me taking 3D printing camping. I know that I can use these cool plates and save a lot of power, but I still have a question. Is this the best 3D printer for doing it if I want to save power? Well, that will be an experiment for another day. So make sure that you're subscribed if you want to see the answer to that question. But until then, I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to remind you that you are a child of God. And again, if you're in the cold weather, take care of yourself and if you can someone else too because we all need each other. I'll see you next time.